Season 1 of Off the Dribble, the Byron Scott Podcast is brought to you by Nef Vodka. Well, hello there. It's just me and the world's best tasting vodka. What's up, guys? It's your boy, B. Scott. This is another episode of Off the Dribble with Byron Scott. Today, my special guest is one of my homies, one of my golf buddies, one of the funniest <laughs> brothers in the world. Man, every time we get together, we just have a blast. Been in 21 movies at least. Been in over 100 uh, TV appearances. The one, the only, and also, and we'll get into that later, but the one, the only, my boy, Joe Torres. Joe, hey, what up, brother? Hey, man, what's happening with you, man? man? You know you got the best hand. You know how we got to do this. Oh, come JT, on. JT, grab that drink, dog. We're going to celebrate this episode yes. and have a good time. Yes. This is my Cheers. purple rain liqueur. I mean, you know my favorite color? Mm-hmm. Mm. My boy Luke made that for us. Well, this That's is good, good, ain't it? Yeah. yeah. My favorite type of liquor, too. <laughs> vodka. I'm a vodka man. <laughs> That's why we got our boys Neff here uh, with the vodka out, as everybody can see. This is nice. These are these 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 are my guys, JT. These are my guys. Okay, right? okay. This That's is nice, peeps. man. That's this is nice and smooth too. Yes, sir. Well, they hey, ha- man. They had to become my people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Be- <laughs> they got to become my people. My people's is your people's. You know go. how we do that. Here we go. Listen, man. You didn't had an unbelievable career, and and I know uh-huh. you ain't nowhere near done because we done talked about this on the golf course shoot, three, four weeks ago. We were talking about some, you know, doing some other things, but. Let's go back a little bit to your 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 college days because mm-hmm. I know a lot of people don't know about Joe Torre as far as where you really come from. You know, you know, going to Lincoln University, you know, what you mastered in, you know, being doing construction work back in the day. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't know that about you. They just know you on Def Jam and now in the movies and doing right. all this other stuff. So let's go back there real quick and just give them a little bit a taste of what you've had to go through to get to this point. Oh man. Well, I mean, you know, life is a journey, you know that. And yes, sir. Uh, you know, I'm back in California, it, it, which I would say is a kind of where I wanted to go as a kid cuz I grew up a military child. Right, right. So my father's in the military, two tours of Vietnam, mom from South Carolina, my daddy's from Mississippi. So I was born um in Newport News, mm-hmm. Virginia. Mm-hmm. My two mm-hmm. older sisters, South Carolina, Fort Jackson, and my little brother, little sister, Fort Ord, California. Okay. So that's okay. kind of how the route came where, you know, we were, so I grew up like in like New York, Jamaica, Queens, New York, uh, uh, you know, South Carolina, you know, uh, Seaside, California. We bounced around <laughs> until I got to St. Louis. Um, but the, when I had vision of what I wanted to do in life was Seaside, California. Right, right. My first uniform was the Raiders outfit, so I'm a Raiders fan. Oh, look at you. Um, you know, you saw, I saw the beach. You know, you saw Hollywood. <laughs> I thought Hollywood was right down the street, but it's like, right. no, it's no. like seven hours no. away. So I'm like, you know. <laughs> and next thing you know, we went from um, Seaside, California to Jamaica, Queens, New York mm. on the bus, on trailways. Um, and yeah, my father came back a little, you know, uh, tripping. From <laughs> Vietnam, my mother had to get it. Yeah, he was he choking Mom's everybody in the house. Yeah. He had a little, yeah, a little PTSD. So we gotta get, the way, get, the, get the hell away from here. We got the hell away from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, so like for like three years, we was, you know, without him. And that's how we got to Jamaica, Queens, New York, and St. Louis, and that route. But um, he got, you know, he got himself together after Vietnam, got some stuff together, and came, joined us in St. Louis. And um, I, that's where I finished, uh, you know, middle school, you know, uh, you know, high school, and college. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and I and I say when I you know when I finish I'm gonna make it back out to L.A. Right, right. And I'm gonna get in show business. And that route uh, is you know it is, is came to fruition. Yeah. So what what made you start to get into comedy though? You know, uh, I remember the first time I ever saw you was on Def Jam and I was cracking yeah. up. But what got you started in the comedy? Um, I got man having five brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my mother and father were funny. My mother was a school teacher. She mm-hmm. taught for 40 years, but she was they were always funny. My dad drank and so they made them funnier, you know, <laughs> except he, you know, he got the beating on you. <laughs> I, I know so already I'm gonna be laughing yeah, exactly. all day tonight. So this, y'all gonna get used to this. Me crying uh, and wiping off tears because of this fool over here. Hey, Go ahead. Man, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is, man. Um and but then I saw you know, I used to, we used to watch back then. It was, you know, you gathered around the television. You only right, had one right, TV. Right, right, right. So, right. you know, <laughs> in the, you know, 60s, early 70s. And then right. you watch family events. And if it wasn't that King Cove, a black man went on TV um, that had his own show back right, then. You right. watched Lawrence Well, You watched um, whatever show that was family-oriented. And that's when I saw, like, Sammy Davis Jr. Mm. And he was on every show. 
every show you can possibly name. I was like, who is this little bad black man on every show, <laughs> dancing and singing and got all his talent and yep. he would just appear. And I said, man, I want to, I want to do that. I want to be inside this TV. And when I got older, I was like, okay, I don't have as much talent as Sammy Davis Jr. did, so or do. <laughs> Can't dance like that, but I can be funny. <laughs> I can be witty. I right. know I can act a little bit. So I just took that um, into school, and you know, being class clown and plays or whatever it was. Whenever I had a chance to be funny or tell a joke, then I used to just start watching um, a lot of you know skit shows, sketch shows, Carol Burnett, uh, Abbott and Costello, mm. uh, you know, um, Stanley and Lowe. Just I just would start studying all these funny shows, man. Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, yeah, the road yeah. to this, the yeah. road to that. You know, Elvis Presley. You know, when he was doing and all these things were, you know, uh, were. Um, were on television, so you know you you watched them during Saturday, right? Um, right. And, and that stuff made me kind of just fall in love with television, man. And uh, I said, I want to be inside that box. And, you know who I uh, remember? Uh, JT was uh, Flip Wilson. Flip Wilson, back in yeah. the day, had his he own show. Had his own show. First black yeah. man I ever seen on the show. They had his own show, mm -hmm. doing comedy, doing uh, 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 you know sketches or whatever. Well, come when he had all these different characters that he right, was playing, and then right. yo, know, where was it, Geraldine that Geraldine, he was playing? Geraldine. You know, so, what did you think of Flip Yo know, Wilson back in the day when you first saw him on TV? And it's funny because I, I just did something, I think it was Amazon or Time Magazine, something, and, and it was they talked about Flip Wilson, Dick Gregory, Paul Mooney, mm. um, the greats. Mm -hmm. um, and Flip Wilson was, was to me the, the, a businessman, yeah, shrewd businessman, owned all his own stuff. Uh, he licensed it back out to Nickelodeon when and all these platforms when they start playing um, the 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 old format again. You know he he, he wrote him a check right away. Mm -hmm. um, so he he taught me how to well reading business wise how to do business because mm -hmm. he controlled it that he came in and got out. And he could come in and get out at his own time. He he was never at the 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 the, the the heel of Hollywood, mm -hmm. and and that's what I loved about him. But I also loved how he always he, he seemed like he controlled his own destiny wherever he was. Mm -hmm. He was on another show. He knew he was just smart and quick as an intelligent black man back then, holding his own and then hosting everybody else. Right, right. Everybody else would come on his show. Right, um, right. Sammy they, and they would right. even have All more them, fun yeah. that they would. And yeah. it was like, whoa! I mean, that's kind of you know what I'm saying if you can see it, you can achieve it. Right. And uh, back then, seeing a successful black man on TV, you know what I'm saying, holding his own right. in prime time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, right. you know, here come the judge and Geraldine. Right. And, oh, my God. I mean, it, it made me just want to, I got to do that. I, I, he can do it. I can do it. So I, I just studied that, man. And, um, you know, to this day, I, no, I don't have my own sketch show, but there, there's a lot of pieces of, of all of them in me. Yeah. So your, your first... Time being at the Comedy Act there on Forty Third. My God, York. I mean, how was that feeling? And and how old were you at the time when you when you did that? Because I know you were really young, and oh. it was your first like big break, so to speak. How how did that go? Um. Well, I mean, you know, like the Comedy Act, Reed and C. West. Um. Cheers to Fred A. Calloway, yes, the man. You know, God rest his soul, who owned that spot, owned that whole Drink block, who made it possible for um. Now, if people don't know that um. Vanessa Bells Calloway's, uh, you know, uh, father-in-law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, his son uh, um, woke me up. Tony, you know, he, he's an anesthesiologist, so he, you know, he's woke me up a couple times. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> for real, <laughs> helped me with my knee surgery and all that. I was like, yeah, I tossed him back in the day. Uh, I was like, yeah, he, my knee surgery. So yeah, but uh, yeah, just just a great energy, man. That whole building had on the Regency West which held the Comedy Act Theater, which um, was where I met Robin Harris, mm -hmm. John Singleton, mm -hmm. Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. uh, Byron Scott, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. Tommy Hearns. Mm -hmm. I mean, back in the day, it was it, it was just a, a, a ground where, it was, it was hollow ground. Yeah, yeah. It, it was where uh, black people went, got discovered. Um, I mean, the Dwayne's, Willie Goldberg, right, right. Um, everybody just in that building, uh, you know, for black comedy, you had to, you had to go through that building. And I, I got here in like March of 89 and they were like, you got to go to comedy act. Yeah. You got to go to comedy. You ain't nothing until you get on at the comedy act. Right, and they right. said, just Robin Harris, Robin Harris. Yeah. You got it. He's the host. And, ooh, ooh, it was crazy oh, as hell too. Crazy. <laughs> And then when I got there, I was like, okay, when can I go on? It was like, you got three minutes in June. I was like, it's March. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Hey, don't miss your time. Right. <laughs> I was like, oh, what day in June? Right. <laughs> so keep coming back and find out. <laughs> so that, that was that was rough, man. So, you know, um, so I got on, I, I, I got in this improv group. 
mm-hmm. which was because um, Robin was getting so popular that uh, he couldn't show up on time all the right, time. So right. it was like, okay, well, you know, you know, the doors open at eight o'clock, put the improv group on to like, you know, eight to nine, to nine or eight thirty when Robert come, you know what I'm saying? So, so myself, so we got a chance to get on stage and, uh, and, um, and really, you know, get a chance to express ourselves individually and just get that, you know, get used to the lights being in your eyes and, mm-hmm. and being able to do a character or get some of your jokes out in, in, in a skit. Right. So, right. you know, cause we were still, cause at the same time we were, you know, Living Color was there, mm-hmm. um, Saturday Night Live was out there. Mm-hmm. So we it used to be a group of comics, the late, great Ricky Harris, uh, Buddy Lewis, who writes now today mm-hmm. on a lot of stuff. Um, we used to, uh, you know, we used to just get together and, and use that time to get in to open up for Robin Harris mm-hmm. to see if we can get discovered. And that just that training right there, man. Um, you know, it just gave, gave you so much confidence. Right, right. It's, it's like being, you know, being in a, on the practice squad or the B right, team. Right, right. <laughs> but still, you get a chance to, you know, feel greatness right. or see greatness or see how greatness right. is work. Got you in the building, and that that does so much for um, a young comedian, man. To you know, to watch and be in that, you know, and to emulate it, mm-hmm. and to go out there and see in front of that same audience. Can I get that same type of response? Mm-hmm. And to hear that and to get that timing back right when people are laughing, when you don't expect them supposed to laugh and don't throw your jokes off. It's, mm-hmm. it, man, it's, it's an art to this, man. Yeah. So uh, that just being there um, and then being um, humbly in, in a situation where, you know, when, when Robin Harris passed, yeah. um, surprisingly, um, at a young age, um, with, with the world in his hands, uh, I became the host. Mm-hmm. And I inherited the club, which gave me a lot of time to be a lot more sharper. Um, and gave room for me to help others. Yeah, Jamie Foxx, yeah, Jamie yeah, Foxx, yeah. Eric Bishop was, he was one of my students yeah. uh, who, for real, who was discovered right there in, in, in the Regency West. Uh, Cause we used to just take over the club. Right. Cause it went from 400 a night to like maybe um, uh, 15 people coming in there. Um, and cause Robin was, they, nobody wanted to come in the club after he died. It was like, yo, he's dead, you know, you can't pack it. Right, right. And so myself, Buddy Lewis, the late great Yvette Wilson, um, and myself, we used to, you know, just come in there and DL used to come and help too. Cause yeah, Robin Harris really, and DL yeah. didn't get long at a time. So he didn't come around the club. <laughs> DL had his club down in Long Beach, the comedy crunch. Um, but it wasn't as big as, as, as you still had to come to the Regency West. Yeah. And that's where. Uh, Jamie Foxx and all of us, we got discovered, man. That's where Def Jam, that's where we got all the agents came down, yeah, you know, yeah. from CAA and, you know, Donald Shifu and Robbie Reed, Robbie Reed, uh, great Robbie Reed, casting director, casted so many films um, um, out there, man, casted us in it, cast me in a bunch of stuff, TV shows. Yeah. Um, she was uh, her, her um, Robin Harris's valet was her boyfriend. So oh, and, right? we were all good friends. <laughs> so I was like, hey. <laughs> Come see Joe. And it was like, you know, so after you, all that time on stage, man, working hard like that, man, I worked out uh, uh, real hard. That's the first place I saw him. I met Wesley Snipes and Holly yeah, Berry. Yeah, yeah. Went on to do Strictly Business with Holly Berry after that, um, with, with Sam Jackson and, uh, you know, uh, who else in there? Tom Davidson. So, yeah, so that, that, that place, when you say Regency West, Comedy Act Theater, um, it's it's just man, they keep pouring out blessings. Yeah, um, I, I remember, like you said, you know, we would go there after games. Oh my god! <laughs> it was like, just man, to see first you guys I in saw there. You, man. Yeah, we would come to after games just to see you, see Robin Harris. Oh um, yeah, and, you came to see late. Robin Harris. You we, come we, see we, me? No, we, 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 well, we can't see Robin because he's <laughs> yeah. crazy, but we knew he, we were gonna see some other great, you know, some up young, and coming comedians, some young, yeah. young, some young, young coming comedians. Yeah, and then you know our 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 other friend, you know, the late great Tony Liston, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Tiny. Who oh uh, was was there all the time? Who was a, who chasing was a people around man. the club? Just, yeah, just choking just, people up. Like Zeus, he was flex, Zeus yeah, back Zeus then. Zeus back in the day. Yeah, he was just Zeus making, making his chest all flex, making people run, and you mm-hmm. know, and just screaming at people, throwing people, choking people out on stage. Yeah, just just because because Robin, was big and Robin could, could control him, and, and him and Robin would go at each other oh as well. God. So that was the first time I got a chance to see you. And then, like you said, when you took over Def Comedy Jam, that was great. Uh-huh. And and then you had a you had a uh, incident with with uh, Russell Simmons, where. I think he kind of knew who you were and was like, "Man, this this kid's gonna be good." Here's my number, oh. and you <laughs> and you got rid of the number or something. Are you lost? And tell us about that. Yeah, the first time I met Russell, man, I used to see Russell Simmons in the club. He used to be with Stan Lathan, um, and um, and and I used to, you know, you know, but I didn't know who Stan was right. at the time. 
And you don't know. And people used to come up to me, and I, you know, I was getting good. I was sliding and slick me. They number to be a manager, a producer. Right, right, right. You know, as in LA, everybody producer. Yeah, everybody, oh, everybody's yeah. in the acting in LA. Right, yeah. Time, everybody so, got a yeah, card. I'm like, hold yeah. on, you just selling French yeah. fries. Now you a producer? <laughs> you, wait a minute. You just was parking cars. Now you sell fries. Now you're a producer. Yeah, now you're a producer. <laughs> everybody. So, well, and Russell came to Russell, used to walk around drunk. And before he got his lisp and his yoganess, <laughs> he used to be drunk and he was a music cat. Right, so they right. came, he used to be all falling out all the time. And I, used to, I was like, I, ain't, I didn't know who he was. Right. So when he gave me his card, I don't know, I think he was slobbered on it at the time. He's, <laughs> the, 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 you can touch the mouth. Like, who the hell are you this to? <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody hear me in the corner talking and spitting on me. And then I'm like, man, come on. I can't understand what he was saying, man. Let me let it right. So I was like, man, I'm trying to go. I was trying to go get some ass. I was like, whatever, dude. I'm sick of these drunk people coming up to me telling me they could change my life. Right, right. I threw, I threw the card away. So then Ronnie Tansley, Robin has valet, he came. He said, hey, man, what, you, what, what dude say to you? I said, man, he ain't talking to me. He gonna change my life. He said, yeah, yeah. He's just sitting you. I said, yeah. Who was that? He said, it's Russell Simmons. I said, who's this? Russell Simmons. <laughs> he said, Russell Simmons, F Jam, and he started naming Crush Groove. I was like, oh, where that number at? <laughs> Hold on. I'm digging all in the trash. You had to go uh, try to find it, huh? Oh, yeah. I found a number. <laughs> he didn't answer it, though. <laughs> when it came around, but right. they, they let me know that they were, they were, um, because back then, you know, you didn't have, you know, I didn't even have a cell phone. None of the cell phones weren't even invented yet, right, I don't think, right? right? Yeah, not 89, not 90. Um, but uh, but if they did, I didn't have one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, That's for sure. so eventually, you found that number. I was like, you got yeah. in contact with Russell. No, got... I didn't get in contact with Russell, man. They was just letting me know that they had their eye on me. Oh, okay, gotcha. And gotcha. um and whatever, but they didn't expect. They were just getting comedians. They didn't expect Robin Harris to die. Right. right. Um, because I used to see him again at Jack the Rapper in Atlanta. Right. Um, and they used to. You know, you see him, but you know, oh, ooh, ooh. I mean, all these, all these, man, some legendary cats used to be, you know, come through there to the music people. So I used to try to go where Robin Harris used to tell me where to go. Mm -hmm. and Tom Joyner used to just be on mm -hmm. Saturdays and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you were like, man, um, you know, there's Steve McKeever, um, uh, who, who was a uh, was polygram back in the day, who was one of the, you know, the black music exec, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They gave Robin Harris his first, you know, his album stuff. So we were trying to go that route and right. meet right. people like that, man. And um and and you know and, and that that's that's that was the beauty about I guess uh BG West Comedy Act. Um and trying to follow a path where I, I guess uh where people would notice you. Cause mm -hmm. you know you don't know the execs. You would know them now, Russell's the stands if you see them. Right. But right. You, 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 you know, to me it was like when I met Bob Sumner, who called, I was in Atlanta and he called and he was like looking for Jamie Foxx. And I was like, well, who are you looking for Jamie Foxx for? He said, we got this show, Def Comedy Jam. And then we, you know, it's Russell Simmons show. And I'm like, well, I've been calling Russell. Russell ain't called me back. He said, who's this? I said, it's Joe Torre. And he was like, oh, we already got you down. And I'm oh, like, well, okay. who's calling me? Right. Is somebody going to let you know? Yeah. <laughs> And they were like, yeah, well, we, we left a message on my voicemail oh. in Atlanta. I mean, in LA. Back then it was a voicemail. You had to right, still right, know the number. Right. But I had been in Atlanta for a couple of weeks, so I ain't got a message. Right. And I and I couldn't play it back then. I didn't, you didn't have that voice thing. You had to just wait and get back and get the right, message. Right. You got 35 messages. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ten of them from the same person. <laughs> right, <laughs> that'll be them. You know what I'm saying, but no, it was like one from them, and I was like, Psh -ch -ch. so there was New York number the two one two, um, and then it then it just went down because they were looking for, and then when Robin died, it was like who can replace him, right? right. Um, and at that time, I didn't have a big enough name, um, so Martin Lawrence was doing uh, Hey at the House Party movies, mm -hmm. um, Tommy Davidson was busy. Um, he was he was locked up with a deal doing a coming to America. Eddie Murphy had that sitcom mm -hmm. going out, um, so he was locked up and couldn't do it. And uh, the next, you know, it was, it was like now who's got who got the most you know likes right, or who right, got the most right, right, viewers? You got a right. hundred million followers, so, and right. I think at that time <laughs> Martin was the next one who yeah. had the most because yeah. Damon Wayans was was going and doing his thing, and and um, so enabled to host you know that a national show like that for HBO. You know, you got to clear through all the channels. Right. Right. Um, and you know, Martin had the most, you know, I guess, uh, you know, yeah, what, what's happening now? He had done this belt, he did a, the, the comedy thing. Um, what was that, uh, that he had won? Um, was that? not, yeah, it was America something, yeah, America's Got Talent, something, the, the, the old one with, with 
Jim McMahon. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Martin had all that. I ain't had no credits. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> had a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I did the uh, the liquor store mm-hmm. and you know a couple comedy clubs. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had played. You know, I did. I played a uh, robber in um, <laughs> the new Adam One Twelve. Oh. <laughs> a couple. I remember that movie, Adam One Twelve, the little police <laughs> movie. Yeah. But they came back with a TV show when I got out here. So man, my first couple of credits was like the you know I played the kid. The the uh, the, uh, uh, the the copycat burglar, right, right. <laughs> and you know, I didn't pull my mask off, and it's me yeah. faking like I was. And you got your five minutes of fame at that particular yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. And then I played on Hunter. I played yeah, the, uh, yeah. that was on Hunter. Hunter. That's actually yeah, was on Hunter. Hunter yeah. No, that one. The copycat burglar was on um, on um, on Adam Twelve and. <laughs> The uh, the gang barrier was on Hunter. Oh, <laughs> it was okay. both of them again, like that. <laughs> <laughs> so he was typecast a little bit. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, coming out. But you took, but you day. took what you had to I get mean, it. That I, I, I time. need to build a real man. Right, right. You know, I get a line. I'm trying to get a line in. Ooh, 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 <laughs> get off me, man. <laughs> He's so, like, come on, you're not. You don't have a sad card. Right, talking. right. So so eventually, mm. you know, uh, Martin Lawrence leaves Def Jam. Yeah, he got yeah, he got he got yeah, too busy. Yeah. Yeah, they were killing him. They was working. Martin Martin got too busy doing all the movies. We was taping like fifteen fifteen shows in a weekend, yeah. like yeah. in three days. It was like five a day. It was yeah, it was, it was work flying and doing that, doing them shows, booking we were shooting them like from I think ten in the morning to like ten at night or something like that. And I was doing the warm ups. Right. Because he didn't have anybody doing a warm up. Right. Right. So that's why I kind of fell into the graces of it or smooth because you know, I would show up and be like, well, who's warming up? The audience for Martin. And reading reading the directions and who's, you know, telling the, you right. know, because everybody was scared. All the comedians were scared. Right. And my hosting experience from doing that, you know, in, in LA when Robin, Robin died, yeah. just, I was like, yeah, well, I'll get up there and do it. Right. But that gave me a chance to work out all my jokes, which because I wasn't on to like, I wasn't headline. I was always a headliner, like on the last big show. Right, right. So it was like, yeah, you had Bernie Mac doing this one, I'm doing that one. So I had all day to just work my jokes because they ain't going on, right. you know what I'm saying? So and get used to the crowd. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this one tonight. And that one, okay, you know, you're See being directed. I warm them See up. warm up. And then they just fell in love with my energy. So by the right. time I got on, and it was all different audiences. So they let, you know, so it was like, once we had hundreds of people standing outside to get in and be taped and filmed. They were standing for hours, yeah. coming from all over the state of New York. And I was like, wow, that energy was crazy, man. Um Felt like rock and roll stars. Yeah, um, watching but, it on TV was crazy because oh you could see God. the energy. I mean, it was yeah, fantastic. and they looking at you like yeah, you better yeah, make yeah, us You laugh. better be funny. Yeah, better be funny. We came a long way. You come from <laughs> Flatbush, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Long Island, Long Island. You like what the hell? You better be funny. You better be funny. I took four, <laughs> four trains to get here, son. <laughs> so let, let me ask you this though, JT, you've been on so many stages. You, mm. You've done comedy for so long. Mm. Oh man! I, I know there has to be at least one. What was probably the most awkward moment on stage that you've ever had? Uh, that's just a couple of them, man. I mean, you know, like the first time you go on a big stage, like mm-hmm. with the Fox Theater in uh, Detroit. That's like I don't know. I was like five thousand plus or something like that. So it takes time for the laughter to go, especially if it's not packed. Right, right. Because they come right. in, they come late. Right. And then uh, the the rafters is filled up there, but the front row and you like, you know, I'm the host. I'm coming right. out and I'm like uh, laughter and you kinda intimidated because it's it's like almost being in like an uh, um um in a in a big forum where there's an echoing and sound coming you on know, right, and it's right. comedian about timing it. I'm like, right, yo, right. Everybody's timing was. I was like, "Are they laughing? Are they laughing?" And they were. It was kind of like echo, and everybody get used to that because we, you know, when you go from three hundred seater, <laughs> but then at the same time, um, oh, what was another awkward moment where uh, I did a show? It was supposed to be for like three hundred people, and you get there and it's like twenty five hundred, <laughs> like twenty five hundred. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, so it was a lot more yo, than I thought it was going. Yeah, what's was happening? And then, and then they tell us, oh yeah, this is the show is for, uh, <laughs> it <was> for <laughs> some the domestic violent victims or something like that. So it's a charity event. I don't know what it was. I'm like, they don't want to tell me. <laughs> so in between the comedians, everybody's coming up crying and telling testimonials, right. and doing stuff. <laughs> 
Nobody let you know what this was all about, huh? And I, I didn't know at the time. I was like, right. for real? Because I got there kind of like, okay, I'm going to go on. I was like, this is really... So I didn't know if that was the theme of it. So I got to make a couple of jokes, and they started booing me. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about some oh. beatings or something. Something I did. I already mean, talked about a joke about it. And it was like, look, they... This is about violence. Why would you? And I was like, look, they didn't tell me. First of all, all y'all was going to be here. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And then, you know, and then and then it was about a, a, the domestic violence, and I didn't coming in half cocked. Right, right. You didn't know Duke, nothing Good about night. It. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, evidently, you want scrap. Or y'all used to getting beat. We, we, we can go outside and get, get it in then. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> Boy, you crazy. I got out of town that night. I was like, let me get out of the town. It's, there wasn't no one. Oh, boy, you crazy. No, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, but I usually don't have awkward moments sometimes. Uh, well, I did have one one time where, uh, because you have to change your audience, I mean, your jokes. And I do an event called the um, a Variety. It's mm -hmm. for uh, disabled kids. They've been doing it for over 57 years. Okay. I've been hosting it for the last five years. Um, and you know these this there's you know it helps out they raise like two three million dollars in a night, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. wanted to change the whole format of you know of you know what they did in no ways. And I said, yeah, let's involve the kids into it. Right. So I wrote up a script like Carol and Ed, we can get the kids into it and skit. But the first year I did like twenty minutes of just clean jokes, you know, just you know about being oh, and this clean, crowd is clean a, joke. This man. is a Trump crowd. This is like. Trail. This is billionaires and millionaires. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, one guy walked up to me and said, yeah, you, you know that W? I'm that W and that Bush. And I was like, yeah. So it's like, because my, my my friend Dave Stewart does this. He's, you know, he's a billionaire. He's a richest black billionaire in the world. So changing my audience from that and talking to them. So I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? I rocked one year. I was like, yeah, I killed it. So next year, when Trump was running, I hit some a couple of Trump jokes and they was like, <laughs> <laughs> this shit wasn't that funny to them, huh? <laughs> the first year it was about, it was myself right, right. and Lionel Richie, right? I got more I got more emails and more calls about me than Lionel Richie. And Lionel Richie blew it up. Right. So right. cause they don't call anybody dude. They call Stevie Wonder, they call this is big time. Um next year I did it with James Taylor. You know what I'm saying? And when I did Trump Joe, he's like, whoa, that's a tough crowd. Huh? I was like, <laughs> I went better last year. <laughs> and it was like, everything was fine until you said something about Trump. About Trump huh? I was like, nothing about Trump or the presidency or keep the politics out of that. That's what I'm about to say. Yeah, I was like, keep the politics but it just, it was a funny, I've been doing a joke. It was, they went over, but it was just like, well, whatever. It was just like, okay, that was, you was cute last year, but <laughs> get that one right. out. So I was like, forget about that one. Forget about that and forget about that. Cause I didn't look at him. I didn't see him as a Trump. I just seen him as, I see people as comedians. I mean, I mean, it's just the audience is the audience. And I ain't right. offending nobody, but that's my opinion. And that was funny. But it was like, that was not funny. So <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Back to my next joke. Back jokes. to the next joke. Back to the next joke. Okay. Hey, let, let, let's talk about some of the relationships you have with some of these guys um, in the entertainment industry. Uh -huh. And uh, you, you know, I know you got some good ones, you know. Uh, I'm gonna, need another, I'm gonna need some more. Uh, You're gonna need some more of that. Left right, in got, a minute, man. We're about to get some more of that. Too. Left yeah. in another we, left. We need, some, we need some more. We need more. JT needs more. <laughs> right. It's four o'clock uh, Sunday somewhere, look, right? Yeah, that's right. It's just, I say it's nighttime somewhere in the world right it now. Is. So you know, we're gonna we're gonna have a drink or two. But tell us a little bit. I mean, you know, two of the biggest ever. You mm -hmm. know, you're talking about Tupac, good friend of yours. Yeah. Michael jo Michael, I'm about to say George. Michael Jackson, another guy that you was pretty close to. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with those two guys. Especially, you know, I, I'm I'm a big fan of both, but I know you did movies with Tupac as well. Oh, so yeah. I know. Well, a lot of people, you know, Tupac lived quick, fast, a lot, and a little time. He died when he was 26. Mm -hmm. He turned 21 during the movie when we did uh, Poetic right Justice. Guess. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> he did not drive. He almost killed myself and John Singleton. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the set one day, they... We got about the that's when the uh, Cherokee, the Jeep Cherokees was hot. Oh, yeah, and yeah, he was yeah. coming off from one of the mountains and he was just woo, didn't have a license. Man, they stopped that car, they got us all out of there talking about you about to kill half the crew, man. It was like <laughs> it, we were all in there. They snatched all of us out. They said, You you do that yourself, but we getting yeah, you Regina, John. Yeah, Regina out. out of there too, yeah. That's right. Right. So it was we was out. But um no nah, man, Tupac was just uh I, I always said he was before his time. Yeah, oh no doubt. Um way before his time. Fighting the wrong wars sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um and and so you do that sometimes when you when you 
realize that everybody's not your equal or they're not thinking thinking as equally uh, positive as you are. Mm -hmm. And I think when he went to jail and we used to find out raised in the mindset he was, which is like, you know, you know, every every everybody thinks that you know when you grow up as a kid, every origin, every every color, every in your culture is your is your friend. Mm-hmm. Every black person, every Hispanic person, white person, Jewish person is your friend, and you you all gonna band together. Mm-hmm. And and he thought that he thought he had one big tribe, and right. he found out that no, most of in your tribe are doing the most backstabbing, and that mm-hmm. hurt him the most mm-hmm. because you know you can't think that somebody's gonna be a hundred percent for real like you are, and. Being in the music business, he he found that out the hard way, which is like with you know having growing up being, you know being you know wanting to go over and stand as a hundred percent black man, and then you go with you, and it's like this is a sixty percent black man, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, this ain't no real black man. He I, I, I kind of crushed his spirit. You know my saying, um, JT is all brothers ain't brothers. Hey, there it is. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah, all so, brothers ain't brothers. You know, yeah. So you so to him, it, it, you know it kind of he had to kind of change his whole mindset and he was getting bored just being around you know um i guess average thinkers Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it used to frustrate him a lot but he was when when he sugar them got him out of jail and stuff he was kind of like you know an indentured servant he was kind of like you know oh man trapped into like you know he's not his own man anymore um and and i think that you know that was another thing that that used to bother him because you know, he used to be able to just run by himself mm-hmm. everywhere. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And just, you know, calm, go. Get a hopping car with me, go. We used to, you know, we, we you know, go get it. He, right. Because he, he, I didn't smoke a lot of weed back then. He did. He smoked all the weed. But <laughs> well, we all had a lot of pistols. We, you know, we was all bangers. We was all like, and not gang bangers. We were just like, you know, we was all fighters. We was right, like, right, right. Myself, him, Bobby Brown, we right. were always like, yo, right, we ain't right. no... We ain't your regular celebrity. Right. You know no what I'm saying? We ain't no punks. Right. Yeah. You right. Go, we don't need no security. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we right. got security, it's to pull us off, off of you. you. Yeah. Period. Now, we don't need no protection like that. You know right. what I'm saying? We got some things too. We right. put, we all got our own things. Boom, and boom, boom. But you had to grow know that. Hey, man, that's right. You got to have security. You guys are a brand. <laughs> you guys you get out that. of hand yeah. and you, you don't, don't need that. that. Yeah. So yeah. learning that, but I mean, we were, you know, you're 20, yeah. you're 21, 22, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, what you doing? I was, I think I was 23 at the time. Um, well, I, I, I think when we did Poetic, um, cause I, Tupac turned 21. Um, so, and then, yeah, so I'm like, I'm a year older than Janet. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so I was, so I was like maybe five years older than all of them or six years older than yeah. all of them when, when we did, by the time we did Poetic. Was he, was he mm-hmm. one of the most gifted you know, oh yeah, artists. he didn't. He didn't even get get all into his gifts yet. Yeah, oh, yeah, because he wanted to do more acting, directing, producing. He was getting those chops out. He had changed from. He used to. He used to tease me all the time. He used to call me, "Yo, you a shiny nigga, shiny. <laughs> always getting hair, your nails done. You always got your shoes on." I'm like, "Who wants to have?" You know what I'm yeah, saying? Hang nails and policy. dirt, and, yeah, you know? Right, right. He catch me in the mall shopping. Right. Me and Regina used to hang out a lot. So he used to catch us in the mall in Cobra City. And he's like, oh, man, look at y'all shiny. I shiny. <laughs> and then I, then I saw him and Tretch as they got a little, you know, like, you know, uh, oh, trying yeah, to come yeah, to yeah, yeah. Hollywood events. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan there, you there. Yeah, they got yeah, on yeah. gated slacks. They got the vest on, but it's from it's a Versace vest. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got pedicure, radicure. Right, they right. got some jewelry on. And, and they it just, changed yeah, a little bit. Yeah, he ain't just dressed and have that bike yeah. chain on. He right. had some jewelry. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it was like, apart. who's the shiny? Right. A little bit about your relationship with with. The other MJ, Michael. Well, you know, I know, I know what MJ. Well, I, you know, I actually had a I got a strong relationship with Michael Jordan than than a frat. Oh, that's and, true. And right. That's a that's whole nother. Michael yeah. Jordan, no, Michael Jordan, a big ass kid. They both of them <laughs> are big ass kids. <laughs> We're talking real. about both of them because to, I know to, how much you love basketball and sports in general. Yeah, I love both so, mics. Yeah, so talk about both and, of them. But both real, of them real, big just, ass, yeah. big ass kids. Yeah, that's true. Big that's ass true. kids, Mike. You know, come on, Mike, prank slap you in the back of your neck and run. He just Mike Mike Jordan just he don't like losing shit. Oh, they, oh boy. very competitive, you know. Um, he, he just everybody know that about him. But I mean, but uh, but he loves you just as much as you love him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get that back. Good uh, man. Uh, yeah. And and Michael Jackson was uh, the uh, the, you know, the few amount of times I've been around him, man, was just pure good spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first time was remember the time mm-hmm. video uh, with mm-hmm. myself and Tiny Lister and, mm-hmm. and John Singleton had me in there before we did Poetic Justice and of the moments we had he was just cool yeah. he was just regular just if you could catch Mike regular he's just talking like you know hey, yeah you know he's, yeah. 
You know, he just. But, but, but people don't but understand people that. Don't though. understand. He 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 will because he could, he used to come to the locker room. Uh, you know, back in the day, and yeah. he would talk. You know, yeah, I mean, it'd, yeah. be, it'd be low. You know, that, that his no, voice his vo- was low. But, the, the, dude, but he would a, talk. His voice sounded like an angel coming out of heaven. Yeah, he would talk. He, would talk. he was. We were watching the playback, and I was sitting in the chair, and I didn't know he's behind me. Um, because you knew when Eddie Murphy was on the set. You remember the time he had fifty bodyguards <laughs> and you know, hundred drones. I didn't have drones back then, but like, <laughs> it's like really. But he had drones. Michael Jackson just skipped up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, <nah>, holding bubbles. <laughs> oh, bubbles, the, the monkey. Man, 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 bubbles had more jewelry on than I did. I was like, man, <laughs> bubbles had some nice outfit on, everything. I was like, bubbles is paid. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles like, yeah, bubbles shit. sitting. Bubbles has his own trailer sitting back, like you know. I'm just here watching, dude. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Anyway, no, anyway, but <laughs> but no, he. I didn't even know Mike was behind me. I'm sitting next to John Singleton. And then I we're watching the playback, watching the playback, and I'm gonna tell you a story too about because he never practiced with them. If you ever see the whole uh, dance move, mm-hmm. he just came. He watched the video and came out and said, "I got it," and went there and did every move. So he didn't practice. With he didn't practice. He just with watched them the video and went. And went on. Never practiced with he, he, for Team and They went a couple times. He said, "Okay, I got it." He went out there and just did it. Because he didn't have time to get it, but he was like, okay, I got those moves. Boom, boom, did him. He put his own, did him, danced on top of their, right. their stuff. But and I got that. Boom, boom. He was like, okay, cool. It, it was, it, it took him like no time to get all those moves. He didn't, he didn't rehearse. They didn't have money for him to come and rehearse weeks to get all that. Right. Or to have a private. That's how talented he was. Wow. Um, but when he did have special moments, he was just laughing and talking with me and Tiny. As you know, because Tiny was making his pecs jump. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you're making me laugh. Come on. I got to <laughs> concentrate. And the music started. He just kicked into it. He was laughing. At us. He, like, he, like he was going back with the neck. And like, and that's when I, that's when he did stuff different. You know, right. people bobbed their hair front. Right, which, right. Mike went yeah, back with the, little, yeah. he did something different. I said, what are you doing with his neck? He was... But then he was like, oh, he be in between another beat on another level with another level. And you don't only get the moments, but he was just real cool. Axis, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. And, you, know, you know, but he will get real on you. Yeah. You know, but, he, like, but, but I tell you what, Joe, he, he was the first singer that I ever seen that would do a song and make up a make up a damn word. You know, chum on. I was like, what yeah, the yeah. hell is that? What, what is chum on? Well, come on, Stevie, what to make up words, too? Well, that's true, too. But you know what? I guess you know. I guess the great yeah, ones, but come on, they yeah, can make the them up. The great ones can do that. But, but, but okay, but let me get to this story. He was standing behind me talking, and I was like, "Who? Was it? What?" I was like, "What?" You know why I didn't want to say it, but the voice was so crisp and so clear. And I was like, "I was like, what? Fucking fine ass? What the woman is?" And I was like, hey, <laughs> "But the voice, was, what, dude? He was like, and he made some noises to." The music, mm-hmm. like okay, John, when it comes like this, you hear that part, and it just sounded just like the instrument. It would sound like he was, he would just set it, and his voice is, his voice is just like, man, you, how do you talk on note? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right, right. You just wake up and your voice is just ready to sing, and you don't miss. It just was so clear, man. No rasp, no. It was just like, I was like, oh my god, this dude is amazing. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, a voice yeah, is a voice. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you hear yeah. a voice. But it's like he's like, oh, that's that's, that's yeah, accent. yeah, yeah. And I, he, I was uh-huh. I was sitting here talking to uh, Jeffrey Osborne. Right? Oh yeah, yeah we yeah. were talking about voices. There are voices that you hear that are unmistakable. Oh, you know God. exactly who they are. Oh, as soon as you hear a note, Michael Jackson's one of them. Luther yeah. Vandross another. Yeah. Whitney Houston's another. I told oh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey's voice is timeless. Yeah, Smokey Robinson, another one. Oh know? yeah, so Smokey is so come and, on, man. I mean, Smokey, the greatness Smokey of Smokey might Robinson. Be the coolest. Cat, I, I I know at damn near age eighty, just the coolest, cool most talented songwriter, yeah. creator, man. That dude is so, so he done so much, man. Um, for the for the culture, for yeah. the music game, and written so many songs and ballads, and been in so many sessions. Yeah. No, he's amazing. It's like you don't even you don't think you're Smokey, my dude. Yeah. Are you talking about Puffy, Diddy, right, right. <laughs> Jermaine? <laughs> How about Versus? Yeah. Versus Smokey, right? No, not hit wise. They, they yeah, can't mess come, with versus Smokey. They can't mess with it. Yeah, because you had to bring up everybody. Right. They 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 have they have, they have no idea. No, nah, they they, they, no they, they they still you know the the new generation. Oh my god! I, I gotta ask you this because you've been in this business so long. How many years? 
Did you 30, 30 plus? I, 30 I, plus I got years. to Los Angeles in 89. You know, I, I got March of 89. I got my first check in August. So when you got that yeah. first check, you said, I'm in, I'm in show business. But I, I, it didn't count until I got paid for what I was doing first. Right. I mean, I got a little $20 here, but when somebody hired me and was like, Young, what you do? It was my baby shower. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let them know, whatever, $300 up there. <laughs> <laughs> Orange County, it ain't the hood. It ain't Compton, Inglewood. It, it was like maybe you know twenty people. You know what I'm saying? You know, five women pregnant. Right. They all look like they were about to burst and had a baby. If I kept making them laugh, I was like, oh man. <laughs> and then I actually met that baby on a set in New Orleans. I was doing a movie. That couple had uh, moved to New Orleans. I was there doing a movie and they came on a set because it was cool with uh, Clyde. Right. I think you remember Clyde. He's a like, Clyde Goins. He's a, uh, no, not Clyde. Uh, Clyde's an actor. He was down there and, and he's, they said, You know who this is? And he was like, This is the baby that she was inside the belly when you came and did the baby shower. And I was like, and She was like 19 or something. <laughs> I was like, Wow. Damn, I'm getting old. That's, that's what oh, I'm, yeah. That's how I'll be looking at it. Just, damn, I'm getting old. Oh, yeah, 19, 20 will. year old. Yeah. I know, but it's like that's, you know, people have stories like yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. Which is, which is cool it. too, though. And I said, Did she cuss you out yet? Because I know she, you know, not in cuss. <laughs> I don't think I cussed at that, that, that time. But, uh, so, like I said, your, your career spanned this so long, 30 plus years. Yeah. Okay. From the time you started till now, what's the biggest difference in being a comedian then versus now? What was some of the changes that you've seen? Um, controlling your own destiny. I think the biggest change now is is to is to ha you have the responsibility to control your own destiny, but now you don't need as many um, agents, handlers. You can basically because you know you got the internet, mm -hmm. so you can reach a lot more people. And the difference is, you know, that you 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 can build a, a bigger audience with the technology you have now. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to read about it, hear about it. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 if you've seen this movie where Tom Hanks is going around, you had to read the news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a movie you got to read, read the news, read the news and the news may be two months later. Right. You know, it's you just events that happen. You don't know when they. You, but now you get stuff in real time. Yeah. You can put your talent out in real time. You don't have to go through three or four people to say, "Hey, you got to be on this television show. You got to be on this network. You, we, you can't get any exposure." without going through right. us. Right. And now I, I, the difference is with any artist, with anybody doing anything, not just in this entertainment business, if you have any type of business, um, any type of brand, um, you can reach the world. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, this question, because you've done that and a lot of people don't know, I mean, obviously a lot of people close to you, uh, we've talked about this on the golf course as well. Mm -hmm. What do you like better? Stand up, acting, or producing? Uh, well, I mean, stand up is the ultimate gift. Uh, I don't like to work as hard doing stand up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a because it's you know it's, I just have to five shows, six shows. Right. I do whatever. Right. It's a gift that I like to paint because I'm a conversationist now, mm -hmm. so I, I I can never get tired of talking because that's the playground, the testing point for all my brands for right. everything I have. Right. I have an audience where I can go out there if they're laughing, if they're receiving it. I can explain it. Come on, conversation. I ain't trying. I'm not trying to make you laugh. You, you know, you already, I already got you. It's right. thirty something years of that. I'm, right, a, I'm right. a brand. Right. Just now, just you know, which brand? Which, which, what, what am I giving you now? So I would have to say, comedy because I can control that right away, and I get a response right away. Yeah. I have to wait till somebody edit it, bring it back, edit it right, put it through it, sync it, get it out, put right. it out in the product. You know what I'm saying I can go live right now and sell my product. Out the trunk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then it's beat, you know right. what I'm saying? Pop lab, up, show up, right. you know, yeah, roll up, right. you know, like the library. Right. But that's 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 control. Yeah. So you you would have to say that because you need, um, you need a, a whole team to make a film work. Right, right. I say a comedian, you're the actor, the producer, writer, director. You're the crowd, you're the audience, you're the editor. You're everything right there, and you got to make that work right away. Joke don't work, take the character out. You know what I'm saying? If your yeah. audio or anything is not coming across on stage right away, you don't have time to go fix that right, and right, post. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have time to fade it back out and fix it. Well, you got to stop it and pause right there. You got to be on the spot. Right. And, right. And, and and to me, that's, you know, that's something I, you know, I, I, I've i mastered. I can do, you know, on a whim. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's, so, comedy. Comedy. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Joe, I asked all my guests this last question. So what is a story that you love to tell, but not many people know about? 
So you tell this story probably to your closest friends, but you know people Man, on the outside, <laughs> that they, they, people on the outside that that know Joe Torre but don't really know, they would be tripping or get a kick out of that story. What what, what's the, what story would that be? Hmm. I, I don't know. Um, probably I'm a big reader. A lot of people don't know I'm. A, I'm. You know. I don't, evidently, people. Don't think I was about to say, I know you, and I didn't know that, you know. <laughs> I had a massive library, man. Really? <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I, I'm a big reader, man, big reader. I just gave my son two books last night, come, come, Rules and Tools for Leaders, and um, 21 what, what, in Reverend Ways to, you know, to, uh, to, to Improve Yourself in Business. Oh, wow. So you just get his mind, because you got to have, you know, I gave him formulas to comedy and stuff like right, that you right. have to, but it's, um, um, it's, it's just, you know, I read Nietzsche, sometimes when I want to, Get my brain really going. I'll go to Nietzsche because he talks in third party, and he goes in and out of the mindset of your subconscious of where you should be, where somebody is, and 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 it's it's just you know it's just it's um it it's just a it's like playing chess with your mind. So to me, you know, to you know, I wouldn't say dumb myself down to the world, but you know, the world gives you you know um, low hanging fruit every day. Right, you know, right. crime, drama, the same old stuff. You know, you know, they try to adjust your emotions for the for the greater good of the economy for right. for people's worth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, they play on your emotions, right. make you sick. Tell you this, tell you that, adjust that. But when you're out of that conscious of the mindset, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you don't, you ain't in that. Right. But you only gonna do that if you read. Right. So you know, so I start meditation in the morning, and you know, I just put my armor on, and I, you know, I don't, I don't feel that like I can be defeated in nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't eat fear. I don't eat, don't, can't, won't. You know what I'm saying? I believe it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So the more I keep, you know, uh, strengthening my mindset, if I get frustrated, that means I don't know enough. So that means I need to learn some more. But you got to be able to read, digest information to be stronger so you can never be frustrated. And that is true happiness. I love that, dog. <laughs> I, I mean, I do. I love that. I, listen. I, I want to thank. My, you can't blame it on nobody. My else brother, but you. <laughs> my brother. We, we, hey, gonna, hey, we hey. gonna have one more toast one too. More toast. I, I always say so. Hey man, you can't blame somebody for being, you know, um, only educated to the length of their intelligence. See what y'all guys. <laughs> see, see what y'all getting. See what you're getting. <laughs> listen, listen. This is the Off the Dribble podcast. This is your boy mm -hmm. Byron Scott. That's my guest, Joe Torre. Love having you, brother. Thank you again. Hey, We're going to see on. each other again on that golf course. I know, you man. Know how I, we I, do it. I, I, get, I get some get back. Yeah, I'm going to whip My hands ass. are hurting I'm now. I'm going to whip his ass again. That's the <laughs> bottom line. Hey, guys, we love you. See you next time. Deuces. <laughs>